All right, so welcome back, everybody. So, I have come back to my second zoo, and I am now done with the aquarium. I am now ready to show you guys the aquarium. Are you guys ready to go on a tour of this giant, giant aquarium? Well, let's go inside shortly here in a moment. Um, I just wanted to let everyone know that uh, I didn't put as many facts on the animals for the aquarium as I did with the rest of the zoo, although I did make sure to put down at least one interesting fact on almost every single animal in this aquarium, so you'll hopefully learn something new. And also, we have two more animals in my zoo. So after I show you guys my aquarium, we'll go into the zoo, the rest of the zoo, and look for the other two species of animals that have been added to this zoo. And then you will have seen everything my zoo has to offer, assuming you've seen my other Minecraft zoo videos. All right. So here we go, the aquarium. All right, so as you can see, it's very, very spacious and big. and somewhat dark in some parts of the aquarium, mostly because I'm trying to keep um, it look somewhat dark for some of these animals, especially. So let's learn about some of the animals that are in this first section of the aquarium. So let's go over here and take a look at these guys. So as you can see, they are seahorses. There's quite a few of them down here in this one spot. But it looks like there's a few of them up there as well. And there's a few more down on this side as well. So let's learn about, let's learn something interesting about seahorses, perhaps. Okay, here we go. Uh, so these are called spiny seahorses. They can live five years. They are the only animal where the male gives birth. And they have a square tail. So maybe that's something you didn't know, that uh, seahorses have a square tail. So anyways, that's the spiny seahorses. Still lots to see, so let's go over here and take a look and see what's inside of this tank. Ooh, look at these guys. Creepy, right? Oh, all right. Well, let's learn about this particular animal here. All right, so we have the angular fish. That's what these are called. We have a few facts on these guys. So they have a muscular flap, which gives them the ability to either hide or reveal its lighted lure. Cool, cool. Males are only an inch in size and latch onto a female for life, eventually fusing with the female. Females tend to be a foot in length, but can get about three feet in length. So that's the information we have on the angular fish. Very unique species of fish, wouldn't you, wouldn't you say? Definitely m not much of a life if you're a male, though. Okay, let's move on. Um, we still have one animal on this side of the building to take a look at. So let's see what, what's in here. Oh, there's one right there. These are shrimp. And we have quite a few of them in here. There's one there swimming around. And we've got a few of them just kind of sitting over here, with one of them swimming around above. Kind of a nice enclosure for them, or tank for them, if you will. All right, so let's see what we have for this particular species of shrimp. These are called pink shrimp. They live in the mid-Atlantic, and they live almost two years. So they don't live very long lives. So, but that's, that's the shrimp. Okay, let's move on. So then, if you'll notice, we have three doors that go into three separate sections of this aquarium. The one on the left and the one on the right are dead ends. So we'll do those first before going through the middle door. So let's do the left door next. <coughs> and we just have one tank in this room. 
but with multiple multiple different species of fish. Multiple. Quite a few of them, for sure. So let's see what we have in this tank. What species do we have? Let's see here. Okay, we have four species of fish, approximately, in this tank. We have butterfly fish, and some species of butterfly fish will eat the tentacles of sea anemones. So that's a fact for, for that species. Then we have the puffer fish. The poison from their spines is more lethal than cyanide, and there is no antidote. So that's our fact for the puffer fish. Then we have parrot fish. They build sleeping bags made of mucus that not only protects them from parasitic isopods, but masks their scent from moray eels while they sleep. So that's an interesting fact we have on parrotfish. Probably the best of the four as far as facts are concerned for these fish. And then the last one, angelfish. There are 90 species of marine angelfish. So that's what we got for these particular species of fish. Hopefully you learn something new, at least on one of these species anyways. Cool, cool. So let's move on. All right, so let's do the right door next. Okay, so here we are in the next room. And as you can see, there are birds. There are seabirds in this particular enclosure. We've got one there, one there, one down there. And if we look up, you might not be able to see it, but there's one up there in the corner, and there's probably another one up there with it, up there high, you know? So it's a little enclosure, not a huge one, but it's... It's pretty high, so at least they've got plenty of height and they can fly up and down pretty well, which is nice. So, let's, what, what are these birds? Let's take a look. So, they are called Arctic terns. The Arctic tern migrates from the Arctic to the Antarctic. On average, they travel 56,000 miles round trip. They live about 30 years, so they may travel 1.5 million miles during their lifetime. That is equal to four trips to the moon. Wow. What a fact. So these are Arctic terns. Man, what a fact for these particular birds, isn't it? Amazing. Well, let's move on and see what the next bird is. Because we have one more species of bird in this dead end of the aquarium. Okay. And here it is. These are called Arctic skuas. There's one here. One there. Looks like there's one up there and one up there as well. There's a couple more in here, but they're probably far, far back in the far back of their enclosure. It's a little bit bigger than the other enclosure is because the other, the other enclosure kind of, this kind of elbows to the right. So there's more space back there for them. So let's see what we have information-wise on the Arctic skua. So... These are aggressive birds, and they will often eat other birds, like the Arctic tern. <laughs> so, it just so happens that their favorite food or their favorite prey item happens to be in the next enclosure over. But anyways, that's the information we have on Arctic skuas. Cool, cool. Not much to say uh, else to say about them other than they uh, eat other birds, obviously. Alright, so let's move on and see what this aquarium has besides birds and fish. All right, now we go through the middle door. Okay, so now this is one giant room that encompasses both a first floor and a second slash third floor, okay? Um, we'll do this main room last because we have a dead-end room here on the left, and on the right we have another room which is going to take us basically to the top floor up there. So it's not a dead end, for instance. So, and it has some interesting animals in there too. But first we'll go in here because this is a dead end. <clears throat> okay, here we go. 
And the first animal we have in here are sea otters. There's quite a few of them in here. And as you can see, they've got a very big enclosure. Very big. You also notice if you look up um, that uh, they have some landmass up there. And so this enclosure, you can see them swimming down here, or you can go up and view them from above if you want to. So while we're here, let's see what we have information-wise on sea otters. Unlike other marine mammals, they lack a layer of blubber. Instead, they have the thickest fur of any animal. Their fur contains over 600,000 hair follicles per square inch. Wow, that's amazing. And that's the fun fact we have for sea otters. Cool, cool. All right, we have one more species of animal over here you can't see anywhere else but here. Uh, as in, you won't be able to see it in another section of the aquarium. And that's the Gen 2 or the Gen 2 penguin. And there's quite a few of them in here, as you can see. So, let's learn about this particular species of penguin. What, we, what do we have as a fact? So, Gentoo penguins, they may dive 450 times a day for food. They can remain underwater for 7 minutes. They can swim up to 22 miles an hour, which makes them the fastest diving bird. Cool. Very cool. Well, see, they've all moved. Now they're all congregating up there a bit. An oar in the middle. Very cool penguins, for sure. All right, cool. Let's move on. We got other animals to see in this aquarium. Not to mention the two that are new to the zoo. All right. So next we go through the tunnel. Which I guess you could say is sort of like a shark tunnel. Although we only have one, one real particular species of shark. I mean, technically, at least in name anyways. Okay, so, let's see what we have in here. What can we see? Let's see. Oh, they're up there. Let's see if I can see them better. Nope, there's two there. Um, I don't see anything over there. They're just all up there in that one corner, it would seem. So, what species of squid is this? So let's learn about this particular species of squid that's up there. Firefly squid. They spend their days at a depth of 1,200 feet. They can flash their bioluminescent light on and off to attract prey. So that's what this species of squid is called. The firefly squid. There's two of them up there. And I don't know what happened to the others, but there were more in here originally, so... It must be... Oh, there's more right there. See? Look. Look at that. There's four right above our heads. Oof. That's where they were. Cool, cool. You can even see these guys a little bit better, considering they're right above our heads. Very cool enclosure. Very cool tank, although it makes us feel like we're in the enclosure. Not the other way around. Okay, so what's in here? Oh, you can notice they're also squid, if you can see them. Yep, they're also squid. These are black squid. So let's see what we can learn about black squid, or just squid in general, right? So black squid, they can shoot out ink to cloud the water to escape predators. So that's the fact we have on the black squid. Nothing super, super awesome, at least with these guys concerning. But we have more interesting facts coming. So, let's move on and see what else we can see in this aquarium. Oh, look at these guys. Look at these guys. Those are manta rays. There's one right there. Oh, there's two back there in the distance. Oh, there's one right there. Yeah, he's... See? 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 Cool. One of my most favorite aquatic animals, for sure. The manta ray. But that's not us. That's not... All we have over here, look up, look above. Ooh, ooh, look, look. He's right there. Ooh, look at him, look at him, look at him, look at him. Oh, yes. What a shark. What a shark. Very cool. 
So let's see what we have information wise on the hammerhead shark. Oh, oh, nice. Sweet. Very cool. All right, so we'll, let's see what we have. So hammerhead sharks, their favorite food is the stingray. They are immune to the stinging barbs of the stingray. They also use their head to pin down prey to make it easier to eat them. A true demonstration of the hammer action. So that's the information we have on hammerhead sharks. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Sharks. Awesome. So we have two of them in here, as you can see. They're very attracted to this area. I wonder why. Hmm. Maybe we should move. Move on. Yes, let's move on. Good idea. Okay. Oh, sweet. Here we go. Now we can, now we can see the manta ray a little bit better. There's one here. As you can see. Um, it looks like there's one up there in the background. Uh, there's also one over here, too, it looks like. There's two of them over here, actually. Oh, there goes the other one. Whew. So there is another one up here. Wow, very cool. So let's see what we have for information on manta rays. Manta rays. Unlike stingrays, they aren't dangerous. They don't have stingers. They are completely harmless. They only eat small crustaceans like plankton. Some have a wingspan up to seven feet long and can weigh up to two tons. Yikes, that's a lot. Man, I wouldn't want to have to lift a, a manta ray, that's for sure. Whew. Heavy, heavy, heavy. But man, aren't they just amazing? Definitely one of the most majestic animals in the ocean, the manta ray. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, yes. Awesome. I love them. I love manta rays. Even more than sharks. Oh, I mean even more than the hammerhead shark, for sure. Sweet. All right, let's move on. You can't uh, stare at the manta rays all day as much as I would love to, for sure. Okay, moving on. So what's in this section of the tunnel? We've got dolphins. See? Look at all of them. There's quite a few of them. Okay, most people know a lot about dolphins, most likely. So I decided to go with the fact that uh, most people probably, probably don't know as far as choosing just one fact. So the bottlenose dolphin, that's what these dolphins are. Just like humans, dolphins have hair called lanugo on their bodies shortly after birth. This hair is later shed. Well, that is interesting. That is something I did not know, but man, that's amazing. Considering they usually don't have hair, except when they're born into the world, that's, that's amazing. But yeah, these are our dolphins, and they don't want to come too close, apparently. They're all kind of just keeping their distance, mostly. Still, cool, cool. Oh, there we go. Woo, you got a glimpse of that one for sure. Very cool. All right, let's move on. All right, so what do we have in here? Let's see what, let's see what this is. Narwhal. They are known as the unicorn of the sea. Mostly, just males have the distinctive tusk, but some females have it too. The tusk can grow 10 feet long. The tusk is actually a tooth. So, narwhal, let's see, let's see what they look like. Oh, 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 there, 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 there's one right there. Whew. Look at that, look at that, 10 feet long. Wow, wow, cool, very cool. There's another one up there. There's at least two, or yeah, there's at least two in here. Very, very cool. The narwhal. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so let's move on. Oh, 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 here it is, here it is. 
the killer whale, the orca. Very cool. All right, so let's uh, learn about this particular animal. We just have one fact on them. Orca, they have a form of culture. Culture, the idea of passing knowledge and language within a group from generation to generation is actually done within orca pods. Each family of orcas has its own unique dialect and that and that are and and that learned behaviors are passed from one generation to the other so one pod generation to the other so that's interesting so they have a form of culture wow 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 that's like the only animal on the planet that has a form of culture known to man the orca who knew who knew So, anyways, it's pretty dark in there, I suppose. We could have made it a little brighter, but um, for the most part, you, you were able to see it, right? So, um, at least one of them. Oh, see, here he is. Oh, no, he's back over there. So, yep, yeah, that's our killer whales, or our orcas. Okay, let's move on. Just about a few more animals in this aquarium to take a look at. All right, so that was the tunnel exit we just went through, so... We have some animals over here you haven't seen yet. Look at these guys swimming around over here. What are these? Let's let's go look this up. Walrus. Males can weigh over 1,500 pounds. Both males and females have tusks, which are used to hold themselves out of the water and keep breathing holes open in the ice. Cool, cool. So, these are walruses, and this is their enclosure. Very cool. All right, let's move on. What's in this enclosure, which is the main enclosure of this part of the aquarium? Oh, look, they're all down there. There's one there. There's a lot of them in that corner down there. Oh, look. There's one right there. Look at that in the distance. Is it gonna? It's gonna go back in the water. Oh, oh, oh. Let's let's go. Oh, it's 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 on the other side. Oh, okay. Um. So over here we have the sea otter tank. Uh, so this is where you can see the sea otters on the second floor, and not often. Oh, look, look. He's coming out of the water. Look. Yes, yes. So you can come over here and see them out of the water if you want to. They, they do come out of the water once in a while, but then they go right back to swimming. Very cool. Sea otters. Very cool. All right. And so this is a dead end, obviously. And there's obviously a, a, a seal over there. So let's see if we can get a better look at him. There's nobody on this side, apparently. Oh, look, look, look. Very cool. So we have a seal here. We actually have four different species of seals in this enclosure. Four. So obviously this is one of them. I believe this is the... I want to say it's either the spotted seal or the harp seal. But we also have uh, hooded seals and bearded seals in here too. So uh, let's go down and see if we can get a closer look at those seals. Okay, so mostly they're down here in this area. Looks like there are, some of them are in, are in the under, underwater cave, too. So this is like an underwater cave. Oh, you can't see them from this angle. Oh, there's one. Oh, there they are. Whew. Okay, cool. So what do we have? Let's see what we have here. So hooded seals. Males have a stretchy cavity in their nose, which they can inflate so that it looks like a bright red balloon. Cool. And what do we have over here? Spotted seals. They are unusual among seals because they often pair up during breeding season, which is unusual because most species of seals don't form 
close relations relationships. So that's interesting. That's a fun fact about spotted seals. Oh, oh, look, see, see, that's that's definitely the hooded seal right there. See that? See that that bright red balloon? Yep, that's a hooded seal right. Oh, and he went in there. Oh, okay, cool, cool. There's one there. Sweet. Yeah, he went in there too. Very cool. And came out. Cool, cool. There's like a there's a hidden little cave up there that you can't see them. So it's it's a secluded spot just for them to hang out so they can, you know, not have people looking at them all the time, right? So that's that's just for them, to, that little spot up there. It, there's air, there's breathable air up there and stuff too, so it's kind of a nice little spot. Um, and then we still have two more species over here we can learn about. Um, and this is the other side of their enclosure, obviously. This is a bearded seal right there. That's a bearded seal. See, you can kind of tell. It looks kind of like it has a beard almost. There's two of them over here, apparently. All right, so let's see what we have information on these guys. Bearded seals. They are the largest species of seal in the Arctic, reaching 8 feet in length and weighing 950 pounds. Very cool. And then the last species of seal in here are harp seals. They are born with white fur to keep them warm. One month after th afterwards, they shed their fur coat because by then they have enough blubber to stay warm. So they look really adorable when they're born into the world and then they lose it when they get older. Cool, cool. So, so, so definitely some fun facts on seals. And man, they just like this area the most. Most of them swim over here in this corner the most. But man, you can see it's a nice enclosure for them. They got plenty of room to swim around. They got plenty of land mass up there to hang out. They've even got a couple of caves they can hang out too. Awesome, awesome. All right, so that's it for the aquarium. But like I said, there are, oh, and then this is the bottom section of the walrus enclosure over here. So you can see them down here swimming. Cool, cool. All right, well, like I said, we still have two species of animals I want to show you guys real quick that we just added to the zoo, and then you will have seen everything in this zoo, um, if you watched the other videos, I mean. Um, one's in here, so let's go in here. We'll skip the animals that we've already seen in other videos and move along. Although, this area looks a little different, if you guys remember my video of the islands, which was the first video for this particular zoo, you'll notice that this doesn't look the same, so the enclosure has changed a little bit for the sea turtles. Their pool is a little bit bigger for them to swim in, too, and we have this area you can just relax in, so that's nice. Um, it's a little bit more open here. And then, um, we also have, um, a nicer viewing area for the uh, uh, sea turtles as well. So now you can view them up here without the glass in the way, which is pretty nice too, you know. Cool, cool. All right, uh, moving on. So here we go, new animal. Take a look. Look at these guys, frogs. We got a new species of frog. I love their design for their enclosure. That's really cool too. Oh, look, they're swimming. That one's swimming. They swim and they hop. Very, very cool. So what species of frog is this? Let's take a look. Tomato frogs. They live in Madagascar. They can live for about 10 years. They can puff up into a round tomato shape. They, they secrete a toxin through the skin which makes, the, which makes them unpalatable to predators. So that's the information we have on tomato frogs. And this is their enclosure, and this is the tomato frogs. Very cool frogs. Very cool. Very cool. All right, awesome. Let's move on. You also notice this also there, this area looks a little different as well. I've changed a few things in here. 
made it look a little nicer in the middle and made it bigger. We also made it so you can see the orangutans up high without the glass in the way, although that doesn't mean you should jump down there and go be with them either, of course. And uh, we took some extra precautions with some invisible blocks just in case. But yes, you can see the orangutans a little bit more viewable, viewable now from up here. Moving on, we still have one more animal to check out. And it's not in this building, unfortunately. All right. It's over in this building over here, actually. And like again, like I said, we'll skip the animals you've already seen if you watched my other videos. And we'll go back here. Um, am I going the right way? Yes, I'm going the right way, I think. Yes, it's this way. All right, here we go. This is the enclosure of the animal that we that's new, and they're swimming down there mostly. So let's let's go down there and see them. Here they are, Azoltols. Very cute, very awesome animals. We've got them in all sorts of different colors, as you can see. All right, let's learn about Azoltols real quick. Azoltol, they are only found in Lake, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that, so, uh, of Mexico. So they're only found in one lake of Mexico. Uh, they come in a variety of colors, but pink is most common in captivity. They have the ability to regenerate parts of their body, even their heart and brain. So that's the information we have on the Zoltals. And that's the last animal in the zoo. And now you guys have seen everything in our zoo. Awesome. Man, what an experience. What an awesome zoo. If you guys liked my zoo video, don't forget to leave me a like. So that way other people can check out my zoos too and see how cool it is as well. Once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys again next time. Goodbye.